So Egypt, e Egypt is a place that's very near and dear to my heart. I, I did some trainings in the Middle East. I even studied Arabic very, very badly. I'm, you know, non-existence. It's much worse than my German. Um, in 2009, and I went, I went to Egypt. I taught people about OTR. I taught people about how to use Jabber. I taught them about various different communication systems and how to use them safely. And at the time, I met some sensors, and they told me, oh, yeah, we use this Cisco gear, and we do deep packet inspection on enemies of the state. And yeah, well, you know, I don't think too much about it, but obviously they're bad guys. So this is a pretty serious problem, but we, we tried our best to tell people in Egypt Look, surveillance is a big deal. You don't see it yet, but when you see it, it will be very bad because what someone can do is pretty serious. And so what happened in Egypt, of course, everyone knows, is that there was a revolution. And in fact, it's not that the revolution happened and it stopped on January 25th of this year. Rather, it is the case that the revolution is continuing nonstop, right? So this January 25th revolution is still going on right now to here, uh, according to some of my friends that are in Cairo, covered with snipers. There are people that are being shot in the eyes. I mean, there's like a real serious thing going on in Egypt. And in the case of Mubarak pulling the plug on the internet, we saw that there was selective filtering. So for example, Twitter was filtered IP address by IP address. And so there was a case where a couple of the IP addresses were not filtered, and you could still sort of intermediate, and you, could, you could sort of reach some of them from some ISPs, and then sometimes you couldn't. But on Telecom Egypt data links, there were two IP addresses which were never filtered, but other ones on the same slash 24 that were. So you could prove without, without any question that they were filtering that right at the DSLAM for the DSL modem. And that's, that's a pretty interesting fact. And in fact, I went to Egypt um, after January 25th again, and I was on a panel with someone from Nokia, Vodafone, Telecom Egypt, the, uh, the head of the communications agency for Egypt, and um, I sat on this panel with them, which was a little bit awkward for them. And I said, you know, now that the dictatorship is gone, I have talked to many people in Egypt that wish to ensure that the Egyptian constitution is something that you respect. So will you agree to never censor the internet again? Will you agree to never send propaganda for whichever regime tries to pop up next? And Vodafone made the usual arguments about pornography and all the other nonsense things about terrorism. And they don't talk about, for example, how their spreading of propaganda is in fact propagating state-based terrorism against individuals that live in Egypt. They just sort of gloss over that. And that's something you can't just stand and listen to. So I, of course, said, well, I have evidence that shows that you actively engaged in censorship. And the telecom <laughs> Egypt executive said, that's not true, you're wrong. And I said, no, no, I have the data, and I'd be happy to provide it in a court of law. I mean, I'm not really a fan of law, but in your case, I'll make an exception. And, <laughs> you know, I'd be happy to provide it. And he said, I'm not saying you're lying. Uh, but okay. And he stopped arguing with me because he knew damn well that he had specifically and selectively targeted certain things for censorship and that they had collaborated with the regime and there would be a time of reckoning and when that time came it would not be pretty for him. We got this on videotape by the way, which is, which is pretty great. Um, but of course unplugging the internet sort of changes everything and as we can see here, there is a demand, and then there was a drop. And that's, I mean, that's pretty serious. They basically promised they won't do it again. However, and if you have a Vodafone sim, you should consider contacting them about this. Vodafone said, we will do whatever the law says. Is, whatever is legal, they will do that. So what they basically said is, no matter what happens, we will do what we are told, regardless of the consequences. It's not because we're afraid we'll be killed, it is because the, our corporate charter is perfectly aligned with the law. Right and wrong go with the law, hand in hand. And I confronted them repeatedly about this, and they continued to say that. That is not an acceptable standard of right and wrong, actually, and certainly not in a dictatorship where the rule of law is not controlled in any way through the consent of the people that are governed by this law. And it is really important to drive that home. These, these laws are bullshit, and we should disobey them, and these corporations should be punished by everybody for doing that. <laughs>